Hello, 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 hello. <clears throat> hello, my people. Let's get cracking. So let's get cracking with this. Hello, 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 hello. If you can hear me, please give me a buzz. <laughs> if you can hear me, Benita, raise a hand. Benita, <laughs> can you please type me? Why are you raising a hand? Uh, let me see. Benita, raise a hand. She said, hello. Hello, Benita, how are you doing? I can hear you clearly. Thank you very much. Let me see if we are on Facebook. See that we are on Facebook, quite all right. Okay. Cryptocurrency and the future of money. Money, 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 money. Today I'm going to blow your mind on cryptocurrency. Uh, as you can hear, cryptocurrency is something that I'm very excited about. It is something that <clears throat> is the future of money. It is the future of money. Um, and I'm going to be explaining to you why it is the future of money. So uh, what we're going to do is that we're just going to keep the ball rolling on this. And everybody that comes around can just grab their seat and continue with us. So I see we have some people here. We have, um, uh, yeah, we have some, a couple of people. So if you want to ask questions later, you have to use the, uh, the Zoom software to ask questions. You cannot ask questions on Facebook. You just got to use the Zoom, okay? All right. So um, cryptocurrency and the future of money, okay? So let's get started. Now, before we uh, start, we need to understand what is fiat currency. Uh, because if you have a cryptocurrency, then you must have a fiat currency. A fiat currency is a currency today that you and I are used to. And that is the money like the US dollar, the Naira, the pounds, and you know the um, CDs, uh, the liras don't have liras anymore. The euros, these are all fiat currency. Fiat currencies are controlled and manipulated by the governments or government agencies. Like we have the European Central Bank, the uh, Central Bank and Central and uh, Federal Reserve in the United States. And these are all government agencies that regulate, manipulate, and control the uh, fiat currency. So the regulator of a fiat currency can determine how much currency is going to be in the market at a given time. You know, um, in some countries, you see it once in a while, they just, the central bank will mop up some currency in the market because they use it to control inflation. So, um, in during after 2007, what happened was that the, the market crashed. So, and there was credit crunch in a lot of countries for the government to make sure that people didn't feel the heat very much of the credit crash, uh, the money uh, problems. They now started printing more money, and they called it quantitative easing. So this quantitative easing easing saw the United States, the Central Bank of Europe, which is the, uh, the Euro European and Central Bank, actually pump a lot of money into the, uh, society and therefore trying to bring down the you know, inflation. So at that time, mortgage rate went down. It happened that uh, the, CB, uh, the, the central banks were lending money to banks at 0% interest. So basically the banks who saw brought this financial chaos to us, they went back to the central banks 
and we're able to borrow money for zero interest rate and start borrowing it out for six, seven percent to people, and they were making cool money without doing anything. That was how the banks were able to come back into liquidity. So who paid for it? We paid for it. So that is how the fiat currency worked. The fiat currency uh, re rely on a third party, such as a bank, a Visa, MasterCard, to process payment, okay? That is the job of a fiat currency. Currency, fiat currency rely on the third party to process the payment. Like one of the, uh, everybody knows Visa or a MasterCard or PayPal or Stripe, all these are organizations that are third parties regulated by the central banks or of each of countries, and they are in between you and the other party. That's why we call them a third party. Somebody like a bank, uh, paper, visa, and all these guys, they must process your payment before it can get to the other person. So they are always in between. That being in between costs a lot of money. Like paper, paper will take a cut of two and a half percent, three and a half percent before that money will go for them. If you are transferring money from the United States to Europe, the bank will take like $35 cash, boom. Doesn't matter how much you are transferring. The cost of transfer is $25, $35, sometimes $45. And when the money comes to the country of destination, that the bank will also take some money out of it. And secondly, the exchange rate. So if they tell you that the dollar is, um, say one euro is $1.2, $1.20, by the time you get the money back, it will not be up to that. It will take like two or three cents out of it. That is how they make their money. But if you take one or two, three cents out of a trillion dollar transaction a day, then you see how the banks make their money. That is how it goes. So it is very important for you to understand that major distinction between fiat currency and, and you know any other currency we won't talk about. Now, another thing is that central bank can print money all they want. So people take it to the extreme, like this one. This is $100 trillion from our beloved country, Zimbabwe. So this, uh, as a certain moment, even when you want to buy a loaf of bread in Zimbabwe, you can put all the money you want in a wheelbarrow. It was not you know, uh, going to be enough for you to buy a loaf of bread. So they just decided, you know what would one, one trillion dollars, not one billion, not 10 billion, not one trillion, 100 trillion dollars. This is what can happen with fiat currency. The central bank can just print money on their own. And when you are in Africa, you have a central bank in Africa, they can just decide to do uh, crazy things. And that is why you see this, because you know, why um, you are an African, so why not? because it's possible, so you do it. So now we come to cryptocurrency. So basically, what is cryptocurrency? Before we go into the idea to say, okay, look, we are going to create, uh, this is the future, cryptocurrency is in the future, but first of all, let's define what we mean by cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is based on the technology that makes them function both and as a product. This is a very important distinction. It is very important for you to understand that cryptocurrencies functions in two ways. It is, it can be a currency, but it can also be a product. And there are cryptocurrencies that have these two properties they, that are used for these two properties. And the reason why they can be a currency and a product is because of the nature of the technology that is behind cryptocurrency. And that is the technology that we're going to be talking about today, okay? So first of all, let's try to understand the basic terms of the cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is a digital currency that is secured using cryptography, period. Cryptocurrency is simply a digital currency. You cannot feel it like we all know. Your numbers, 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 numbers. 
Today, we have over 1,300 cryptocurrencies available. Uh, the famous one is Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just a cryptocurrency. And after Bitcoin, we have Ethereum. We have Zcash. We have Ripple. We have all these currencies and you keep going and going and going and going and you will get to 1,300 cryptocurrencies that are available today. Tomorrow, more will come. Next week, more will come and it keeps coming. Why? Because it is not difficult for a crypto, new cryptocurrency to be created, okay? So what is remembered in the previous slide, we said that cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency is, is created or designed with cryptography. Basically, we are using cryptography to secure digital information that can be represented as currency. So how does cryptography work? And why is it secure? I'm not going to go into heavy details of cryptography. Otherwise, we'll be here for three days and some of you will just abandon me on this presentation. So I'm just going to break it down in a very simple term, what that means. Cryptography involves creating written or generating generated codes that allow information to be kept secret. Okay, it, you know, the basic form of cryptography is what we call, you know, letter substitution. What is a letter substitution? For example, you can write the letter W-H-A-T, what, in a, in a word, and you can decide to substitute it with another four letters. So therefore, anywhere you see a W, you say, okay, remember, let's call it an S. Anywhere you see a H, let's call, call it an E. Anywhere you see an A, let's call it an H. Anywhere you see a T, let's call it an F. That is a basic substitution. This is a simple form of cryptography. So when you substitute all the alphabets, the 26 alphabets with different letters, so you can actually write with it like that. Other person cannot read it, but if you give it to somebody who know a very little, uh, you know, a little bit about cryptography, they can. Uh, you know, decipher it very quickly. So that's a very soft form of cryptography, but that shows you what cryptography is. Now, cryptography makes it impossible that people can just read information you present, it, you present to them, you know, just like that, because it makes it difficult to read, isn't it? So like reading Japanese or reading, um, you know, uh, what do you call the other one, Chinese, because the letters are, you know, jumbled together. So, function has three basic functions. That's what we call the CIA, not the other CIA. The CIA means the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of data, which basically means that if information is encrypted, it keeps the confidentiality. So somebody who has no authorized access to the information cannot read it because it is scrambled. The information is scrambled. Secondly, if you cannot read it, no software can uh, 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 read information, talk less of changing it. So if uh, information that is protected with cryptography cannot be changed, that's why we call it integrity. It preserves the integrity of that information. The third one is the availability. It is difficult to uh, destroy you know, information completely that is that is, uh, you know, that is, um, how do you call it? Um, uh, that, is, that is encrypted because the, the, the encryption makes it, um, you know, uh, accessible all the time. Because if you can, if you, in, the integrity cannot be uh, preserved, that means the information is not available when you need it. So that is what the integrity of the, uh, the, 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 you know, it preserved the availability of the information as well. That is not so strong, but what is very strong is what we call the non-repudiation of information. The, when you cannot say, oh, it wasn't me that write that. If you write information and it is secured with your, your key, your private key, you cannot deny tomorrow that it was you who wrote that information. So all these are things without being too technical. Why? Uh, cryptography is a very powerful 
way to secure digital information. Now, the, so because of that, when you want to create currency, what is the best way to create it? So you need a technology that makes it impossible for somebody to, uh, you know, change the information. You make it impossible for somebody to deny that he or she ever sent that information. And you make it impossible. You use a technology that makes it impossible for somebody to, uh, you know, um, modify the information on transit. So I, even when you send it by email, somebody go on halfway and change it and represent something else. So that is why cryptography is a very important aspect of, you know, uh, creating a new currency. So another factor of digital currency or cryptocurrency are, for example, number one, it is a it used distributed peer-to-peer uh, -peer technology. That means if you have a currency like a Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not stored anywhere in one place. So I'm going to repeat that. Bitcoin is not stored in one place. The information that creates Bitcoin is stored all over the place, millions of locations. In fact, if you set up a machine to mine Bitcoin, all the Bitcoin information that is out there, you will have it in your machine at home. Okay, so because the, the, the information of all Bitcoins can be is distributed everywhere and you can actually read it. There is software to read all the transactions that is made, ever made with Bitcoin since Bitcoin was created. So that is what we call distributed pair-to-pair -pair system. So nobody is controlling it. Nobody is in charge of Bitcoin because like I said, if I install the software on my computer, I can download the whole copy of the Bitcoin uh, 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 database and I have it now. Because so it's, it's a distributed database. So in that distributed database, the anytime somebody make a transaction in the Bitcoin database, we're going to talk about what our database is later, that information is kind of synchronized with all the copies of uh, the database all over the world. So if I have a database and you have one, the other guy have one, we have one million, anytime a transaction is made, all those databases are going to be affected. Okay, so it's distributed. So you cannot shut Bitcoin down because as long as you still have some people who have the Bitcoin database, all the transaction that Bitcoin ever made is in that database. So they can tell you how much coin was created, who used the coin, and, 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 and where the coin was used. And all the information is there. What is the balance of each ledger? Everything is there. So these transactions are recorded in the public ledger. It's like going to the bank and making the ledger of a bank public so that everybody can see it. That is what the Bitcoin ledger is. So, um, and I'm going to talk, tell you later why Bitcoin is not so anonymous like people claim it is. So all this information is public information. The only difference is that it's encrypted. So, and they are used with special codes that you cannot, my name is not there to say, okay, uh, Aram's Iber, he uh, owns that key and he spent 10 Bitcoin yesterday. Last year, he bought a car with 100 Bitcoins. There's no way that information is recorded. But what is recorded and what everybody can read is that a certain key or a certain um, uh, you know, information that represents me is, was used to buy uh, 10 uh, Bitcoin yesterday and where the Bitcoin went to. All that information is available all over the place. So it's very important to understand that as we move ahead. So the question is, who can own, own Bitcoin? Now, the answer is anybody. Anybody can go and buy Bitcoin or uh, owns one. But the thing is, who owns, who can own a cryptocurrency? Anybody can go and create a, big, a, a cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is not difficult to create. So 
I can go tomorrow and I create cryptocurrency called Aram's. And I'll put it out there and I will start telling everybody in the world that look, oh, I have created a very powerful cryptocurrency and it will be good because the technology that is used to create Bitcoin, all the, many of these uh, cryptocurrency is open source. That means it is out there in the public and everybody can use it. So I can go and create my own cryptocurrency. So for you to understand the effect of that, these are the crypt, some of the cryptocurrencies that are created today, which are popular. We call them the art coins, which basically stands for alternative coins. These alternative coins, you know, some of them are trying to solve some of the major problems that uh, are, you know, we can say problems in Bitcoin. When we say problem, it doesn't mean that Bitcoin suffers from huge problems or Bitcoin is not, uh, uh, you know, secure, but there are problems of in monetary transaction that people want to solve, like the speed at which Bitcoin works. And therefore, people will create another coin, hope, hoping that that new coin will solve that problem that was identified with Bitcoin. But Bitcoin is so popular because Bitcoin was is the first major cur uh, digital currency that gained so much, uh, you know, uh, worldwide acceptance. So, but these are the ones that, you know, if you Google them, they are there. Very, they are also they're very famous. They are second to Bitcoin. For example, Ripple, Ripple is the fourth largest uh, currency, digital currency. You have, um, you know, uh, what do you call it, Ethereum. You have, uh, you know, uh, Monero. All these are digital currencies that are available right now that people can use. Okay, so you can see that we don't only have Bitcoin available. This is a bit. This is a coin that they call the pot coin. You know, <laughs> this is just to show show you that anybody can create a coin. This coin is called the pot coin. You know, pot is in the United States, uh, marijuana in England, cannabis, uh, Morocco in Nigeria, or, you know, weed. You can call it what you want. But in America, because in a lot of states, weed is legalized now. So we, people thought, you know, what is the best way to buy weed without problem? So let's create a cryptocurrency to buy and sell weed. That is how Podcoin came about. And this is a, this is a real, you know, cryptocurrency. I'm not making it up. So the other one is useless Ethereum token. And you look at the, uh, the uh, logo of the, of the coin. It's actually the middle finger. So basically, there are people who created this coin. They call it useless Ethereum token. Now, why did they create this coin? just to show that they can do it. When, because every time a new coin is created, you know, people don't understand the technology of cryptocurrency. So they think, ah, Bitcoin made a lot of money, eh? Bitcoin is $17,000 now, right? Okay. So I missed that train. Ah, next time I see another coin coming up and I'm going to jump into that one by it. So then, but they don't realize that, look, anybody can create a coin or anybody can create a cryptographic coin. I can do it. I can do it tomorrow if I want. And I can start selling it to all gullible people. That's people actually doing that and making and raking in millions today. People just create coin. They go to Facebook and they advertise it. And they said it's the next big, big, uh, you know, cryptocurrency. And people, because... Bitcoin is so successful, people jump into it. And that is why today we have 1,300 1, cryptocurrencies out there and there are more coming. So more are coming, more are getting broke and getting out of the business. More come, more go. More come, more go. So that is the more reason that you have to be very careful if you are trying to invest in the cryptocurrency world. That is why I said, I took the responsibility to say, okay, 
let me make this uh, educative program to just educate people what cryptocurrency is because all the noise that you hear online is not necessary, uh, especially you know, among us, that people say, oh, they are cryptocurrency guru. They go and do this, they go and do this, they come up with different ways to rip people off from their little money. Okay, so you need to be aware that there are so many fake out there, there are so many fake business out there that has to do with cryptocurrency. And it's only going to be more fake and fake and fake and fake. So you have to beware and don't spend your, you know, hard end or fiat money to go and buy a fake, bad, a useless, you know, digital currency. Okay. So now what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin seems to be the most successful, the biggest right now. Bitcoin is the major currency. Bitcoin was created by a group of persons called uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Sa Satoshi Nakamoto, people believe that <laughs> it is one man. Other people say, no, it's a group of people who created this technology where Bitcoin is used. Now, let's put it this way. Uh, Sat Satoshi Nakamoto, um, there's actually a man called Satoshi Nakamoto, but the man say he's not the one that did this, and he's an older man. You know, he's, you can see him on Google. But he says he's not the one that did it. So nobody know who did it. Because people did it. They created Bitcoin, and they put it into the world and handed it over to uh, some people through the internet, and nobody knows who did it first. So that name... There is a nickname called Satoshi Nakamoto, and that is the one everybody knows, okay? So there is no government group that controls it, no individuals that control it. There is no authority that uh, control Bitcoin. Everybody you see working on Bitcoin, they are, uh, you know, some of them are custodians, like uh, of a certain part of Bitcoin, but in majority of the case, Everybody that works on Bitcoin is either creating value using Bitcoin or selling Bitcoin or trading Bitcoin or doing any other thing with Bitcoin, but they don't own Bitcoin. So if you see somebody that tells you that they own Bitcoin or they work in a company that own Bitcoin, that is an alive, that is not how Bitcoin works. Okay, so. Bitcoin was first created in October 31, 2008 uh, by the Nakamoto yeah, guy or group. So these guys uh, created this Bitcoin as a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, you know, uh, electronic cash system. Call it the peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. Basically what it means that, like I've just explained, that there are so many computers that must work together to authorize the, the payment, create new Bitcoin, and etc. So I'm going to be uh, telling you how that works as we move on. Okay. Um, acceptance of Bitcoin. When Bitcoin first of all came out, Bitcoin was once upon a time worth one cent, two cent, three cent per one. So it wasn't a big deal. People talk about Bitcoin, people say, uh, you know, but it was not serious. And then there was this guy, an American guy, who created a site called, uh, you know, the Silk Road. The Silk Road was a nasty site where you can go on the ground and buy, you know, weed. You could buy guns. You could buy cocaine. You could hire people to kill somebody for you. So that was what that site was doing. And the way they were paying that transaction was to make use of bitcoins. So therefore, Bitcoin was very popular on that side. And until one day, the FBI was able to trace the, 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 the owner of the site and the, the, he was later arrested. And today he's cooling off in federal prison for life for setting up that uh, site. In fact, when the FBI confiscated his computer, they were about... Uh, uh, the the, the, the uh, bitcoins that they've discovered in his possession, then today is worth over $400 million. 
that it was in the computer of that young man. So that is how it, you know, that was one of the major things that made Bitcoin to be so well known in the world. And from that time on, uh, you know, more things started happening with Bitcoin. So that Bitcoin is now accepted to things. You can pay, buy things with Bitcoin. You can, you, you go to some website, they ask for um, Bitcoin. Uh, you could buy some, in the United States, for example, there are places you can buy cars with Bitcoin. You can buy houses with Bitcoin. You have even Bitcoin ATM machines that you can go there and put your card in it and it will convert your, your, your Bitcoin to US dollars and you can collect the fiat currency from the, from the Bitcoin machine. But you can also transfer Bitcoin from one person to the other very easily using various means. So what in the last, you know, couple, uh, one or two years, one thing that has become very familiar to people is trading of Bitcoin. You know, and today, say, I think it was since Friday last week, we are now able to trade Bitcoin futures. Bitcoin futures, they are, it's a, it's a financial, um, it's, it's a, it's a, this is a design so for people who buy and sell in the futures market, in the stock market, they use features to hedge their, uh, you know, their, their activities. So for the fact that the futures market have accepted to create a product for Bitcoin, that is that's really now legitimized Bitcoin in the eyes of the world because uh, this is, you know, uh, this the, the American uh, company that you know is is dealing on Bitcoin is a government regulated, uh, you know, establishment. So therefore, if they accept to, be, to trade a Bitcoin, that means that from today or from Friday last week, all uh, big companies like insurance company, like pension funds, uh, like uh, Goldman Sachs banks can now officially trade Bitcoin before they couldn't. So the price hike that came up from $6,000 to $17,000 that came because of this news. It was not that suddenly Bitcoin became, more, uh, you know, you can do more with Bitcoin. No, it's just because the anticipation that the, 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 the Bitcoin features were going to come into the market. And because of that, more and more people are going to be trusting Bitcoin to do business using Bitcoin. That is why the price went up. Okay, so now let's compare the value of Bitcoin to the value of the world, the world's currency, because we said that Bitcoin is the future of money. I mean, Digital currency is the future of money. It's the future. Because the money we have been using now, this money has been there for a very long time. I mean, in the Stone Age, we use different type of money. Uh, in the Industrial Age, we use a coin, paper, and everything. And in the Digital Age, it's only a question of time before the money we are using today is replaced by digital currency, period. Now, somebody can ask and say, okay, why, why this? Because uh, the people think that because they are, can transfer money from one bank to the other today, that that is digital currency. But that is not digital currency. What you transfer from your mobile phone to the other guy is not digital currency. What you're actually doing is helping the bank to do their job. Because before, when you, trans when you want to transfer money, you put and write a slip and go to the bank, and the bank open the ledger of your account, they subtract some money out of it, they put the total there and they give you your passbook back and they, they go to the other bank and write the other person's account and they write it on that ledger. That is what they used to do. But today, you are now using electronics to help them do the work. So that's just basically what it is. So, but somebody must do that. With digital currency, you don't need somebody in between to do that. You can just transfer money straight to the other person directly and the computer will register it and, and just make the switch. So there is no ledger that is being written by the bank and a subtraction and addition by the bank that is done by the software. So it's a totally different technology. So now 
So how big is the financial world? You see this big number here, <laughs> this big ball here, the first one. That is 83 trillion US dollars. That is all the money in the world. All the money in the world. Nigeria money, Togo money, American money, every money in the world is that money. So the next one is, I think this one is 66 trillion. 66 trillion, that is the stock market. So all the stock market in the world is 66 trillion. The next one is the physical money, US dollar, British pound, euros, naira, all that physical money is 31 trillion. Then next one is gold, gold market cap. The gold is worth 8 trillion. The gold in the world is worth 8 trillion. The next one is US dollars in circulation. The US dollar that is printed and in the circulation is $1.5 trillion. Okay, give or take. The next one is Apple. Apple is worth $730 billion. Wow, that is one company. Apple is worth $730 billion. The next company is Amazon, $402 billion. And then you have uh, all cryptocurrencies, eh? Bitcoin, Ripple, Ethereum, uh, all of them are worth just $100 billion. $100 billion. All the currency in the world, Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Ripple, all of them, is not even as worth as Amazon.com. It's not even as worth as Apple, okay? So that shows you that in the world of digital currency and cryptography, we are at the beginning, just at the beginning. If you want to, if you want to, um, you know, replace a global currency with cryptocurrency, <laughs> then you have a long way to grow from 100 billion to 30 trillion. Okay. So there is a world that is going to be open, it's going to be big, it's going to be huge, okay? So now the next one is Bill Gates. Bill Gates is worth, worth $86 billion. And then you have uh, Larry Page. Larry Page is, is, is the, the co-owner of uh, you know, Google. And then look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin, Larry Page is worth more than Bitcoin. <laughs> Bill Gates' asset is the asset of Bitcoin. Bill Gates' money is twice as much as the value of Bitcoin. So that shows you how small Bitcoin is in the big picture of the world currency and the money that is out there. So the, what pe people are betting on the fact that Bitcoin, if Bitcoin become as valuable as Bill Gates, then the price of Bitcoin still can double. So now Bitcoin is 17,000. If it doubles, it will be, yeah, you know, 34,000. Yeah, 34,000. So if it doubles than that, so because of that, if we double it twice, we can hit maybe $50,000. So when people are making their evaluation, that is one of the way they make the evaluation and say, okay, because of that, we feel that rise and rise and rise and rise. Okay. So now, before we talk about if that expectation is true or not, you know, we need to talk about the technology that Bitcoin is created upon. Because as if you want to make money with Bitcoin, you need to understand how Bitcoin works. The Bitcoin works the same way with the other cryptocurrencies. So you need to understand what is the technology in the layman terms that the cryptocurrencies are based on. Because then you need to, then you understand that they are not just money. They are more than money. Okay. And that is why they are so valuable. So what is a bit, what is a blockchain? We have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. All right. And then we have a blockchain. A blockchain is a technology that runs Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency. 
And blockchain, you can do a lot of, sorry, you can do a lot of things with blockchain because a blockchain is a distributed database of records and of, of public ledger. So in the case of digital currency, this database contains all transactions that have been executed and shared among participating parties. So all the transactions that was carried out today is in that distributed uh, database. I have one, you, and the other one have one, everybody has one, and the record on this database, in this database is all the same. Uh, participant parties are called pair to pairs. So this is an example of the pair to pair. You see that all the computers that are out there, they are running, they have a copy of, you know, the blockchain. And since they have that copy of that database, they have a copy of that database and all that. So it is distributed. You cannot shut it down. If you destroy one computer, the other computer still have it. If you destroy it, the other one still have it. Now, they, a lot of people don't understand um, what can you do with the blockchain, okay? So like here, you see, this is typically how a blockchain technology looks like. If you see on the left-hand side, we have a block. So for, to, for the case of simplicity, let's say that you want to transfer $100 to somebody in China, and then you're using your, your, your Bitcoin to do it. So in that block, the block is going to be created and say, okay, this person is transferring money from this person to that person using a certain uh, you know, transaction key. Okay, that block is attached to the next block, an existing block, okay? So anytime a new transaction is created, another block is added. So anytime another transaction is created, another block is added. And when you keep adding all these blocks together, it's a block of text in the ledger. And that's why they call it a blockchain. So it becomes a chain, a very long chain of transactional information. That is basically why they call it a blockchain. Now, the interesting part of this blockchain is, I hope you guys can follow, you know, I try to do it as, as um, how do you say it's as elementary as possible? I'm really trying my best here, but I hope you guys can follow. Uh, you know, so the advantage of this the, the, of this blockchain technology is that each block cannot be edited. So you cannot say, "Ah, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. Like I want to go and change it." I lie. You make a mistake in, and, and you send out a transaction, or you send a transaction to somebody using Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, you cannot modify it. Because that is the power of cryptocurrency. That is the power of blockchain. Once the block is created, it's done. You know, finito. You cannot go and change it. So the block is done, it's added to the next block. So next day, somebody is sending money to Tokyo, a new block is created, added to the next block. So you have all this blockchain. Now this blockchain is distributed to guess where? All the computers that are involved in the chain that are called nodes. So that is why they call it a distributed network. And this distributed network, you cannot destroy it because as long as there's one or two computers out there that have the complete database of the cryptocurrency, then all the transaction that was ever created is going to be on in, that, in those two computers. Okay, so that is how cryptocurrency works. Now, this is a more bigger look of the cryptocurrency for those people who are technologists, they want to know a little bit more about this. Now, let me give you one clear example of why um, um, what, what, you know, I think I'm gonna do that later, but maybe I can say, I can, I can, I can say it here. One typical example of how this technology is being used. For example, um, if you take a look at voting, like in Nigeria, they always say, ah, you cannot trust people voting, everybody ring the election, ring the election, whatever. If you introduce 
blockchain technology into voting in Nigeria, it becomes impossible to ring election. So give you an example. So then you have a blockchain technology introduced because there's already an, an app that has been designed, a blockchain technology that has been designed by Australians uh, that for government to vote, okay? So that, so what happened is that if you want to conduct an election, say using the blockchain technology, remember the ledgers cannot be, ledgers cannot be uh, forged, number one. Ledgers cannot be edited, number two. Once a transaction is created, you can, you know, it just, once it's added to the block, you cannot delete it. So it is always available. So now imagine there is a blockchain technology for voters in Nigeria. So everybody is required to cast votes with their mobile phone. You don't have to go to a polling station. You don't have to do anything. You just have a wallet on your mobile phone. So then you're going to cast your vote. So once you press the person to vote for, you can, you can only vote for us. You use your uh, print, identify you, and you vote, and that vote is registered. Once it is registered electronically, it cannot be modified. It cannot, it cannot be modified, cannot be deleted. Cannot, and every computer that is a node that is attached to that blockchain network of vote, voting uh, INEC, let's call it that, all these computers, they have a copy of all the votes that were cast in Nigeria in all the elections, whether it's gubernatorial, senatorial, House of Assembly, all the votes are recorded and distributed to all the machines. It can be 1,000 machines, 7,000 machines, 1 million machines, doesn't matter. If you have your laptop and you plug it into the internet, and you, you, get down, you download the copy of that database and it's your, in your computer. So everybody can calculate the total vote per candidate. Everybody can do it. So you can have a software on your laptop that is calculating the number of votes real time. No, 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 no bullshit about it. The number of votes is calculated every time. As you are typing, somebody's voting, your number is going up. PDP 10, APC so 15, you keep going up. So nobody can change it. That is what you can do with uh, blockchain technology today. Another uh, uh, thing they are creating with blockchain technology today is to ensure that, look, all these people we put in the government in Abuja, what do they do there? So therefore, we can have a few of them there and say, look, from now on, any Things that come up for the country that has to be voted for, the only thing that these people in Abuja should go and do is to go and debate it. So let them bring up the matter and say, okay, look, um, we are going to debate on the matter of if we're going to build the road from Lagos to Kano, fine. After the, this, how much is going to cost? Everybody debate it. Debate, we are going to vote. But they don't, they only can cast a vote. Every citizen in the country has their mobile phone and they can cast a vote on that motion. So you get an, an, an SMS on your mobile phone that you can vote in the next three hours. You look at the motion and you say, okay, I vote for or against. The majority carries the vote or whatever model you want to use. So that way, the democracy can be given back to the citizens and not some you know, bourgeois who are you know, somewhere in the central location you know, being manipulated and being bribed to take one or two decisions for the country. That is the future of crypto. So that is one way cryptocurrency, cryptography, using the blockchain technology can function in the future and replace a lot of things that we are doing today. Okay. So, um, so now, since I hope that I've been able to explain what cryptocurrency is, how cryptocurrency works with cryptography, and how you can secure it, and, uh, and how it is secure, cannot be copied, I mean, it cannot be deleted or, or, or you know, altered or whatever, in whatever form. And I hope you also understand now that Bitcoin is just a crypto currency, very good one, and that there are other cryptocurrencies as well, and that 
all the other cryptocurrency that they, has, uh, they have also potentials like Bitcoin. There are some fake one like the Aram uh, crypto. Uh, you have the useless uh, coin or the fake one. So you have to be careful about that. So now we're going to talk about how to make money with cryptocurrency. It's because that's what everybody wants to know. This thing is so booming now. And how do we make money? We want to make a lot of money with cryptocurrency. So I'm going to be telling you a little bit right now on how to make money with cryptocurrency. Okay. So uh, one of the ways you can make money with cryptocurrency is uh, uh, basically through mining. Okay. So <laughs> these people, you see these people, they're actually mining a cryptocurrency. They're, you know, it's, it's a cute picture. But I'm going to be explaining to you what mining is. Um, mining is a process that it, that creates cryptocurrency. So the people who created cryptocurrency, this is what they did. Cryptography is based on a very complex mathematical problem. These mathematical problems are so complex that only computer can solve them. And to solve them, your small laptop is cannot really do it that far. So you need very big and big and big and big computers to solve these mathematical problems. So the guys who created Bitcoin through, uh, you know, bit, uh, you know, they, they created it in such a way that when you create this, when you solve, anybody that solved this complex mathematical problem, then new coins are created. So to create a new Bitcoin, which is basically not a coin, but we we'll call it Bitcoin. To create a coin, a very complex mathematical problem must be solved. And then a coin is created. It's like having a student in a class and you put a, a, a mathematics on the board and you say, okay, anybody that can solve it, you'll get the reward by uh, $1. So that's basically what Bitcoin is. This mathematical problem is so complex that computers that are solving them, they for a Bitcoin for a coin to be created, they must solve conditions. So once the system thinks, hey, there's a solution to this problem, and then a coin is created. Another solution, oh, a coin is created. Oh, another solution, a coin is created. And the computers that are solving these coins, I mean these problems. They are called miners. This is what they do. They, they mine, basically mine coins. They are like this one. They, <laughs> these computers are solving equations, solving very complex mathematical problems, and they are solving that to mine coins. Okay. Another job of these computers is this. Anytime you spend Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency, these computers are the ones that verify the transaction. Don't forget, they have that complete database. So since they have the database, they can verify if this transaction is real, yes or no. So that's another job of these big, massive computers. Okay? So this is what you've seen before. So what happened is that when these mathematical problems is solved, big, huge mathematical problem is solved, then a new block is created. Each transaction is processed into a block. Each transaction block is secured into an existing chain called the blockchain. So like I explained to you before, this is how this blockchain idea came about. So these uh, big, big computers, they are solving problems, they are processing transactions, and they are creating this blockchain the whole day. Yeah, making, building blocks, building blocks. And that is how the whole, system works. So the, 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 in the cryptography industry, they call this the proof of work, the proof of work. So you, the computers, after they have mined cryptographic, they have calculated these cryptographic uh, calculations, this problem, and they, success, they are succeeded in doing it. Then we say, okay, look, uh, they have solved this complex puzzle. That is a proof of work. And that proof of work, hey, please reward me of my, give me Bitcoin, give me, give me Bitcoin. So this, this is, a, is a big business. People who are mining for 
Bitcoin. You actually mine for the Bitcoin. Without these computers, new Bitcoins will not be created. So now, first of all, um, let's talk about the Bitcoin anonymity. So now, since all these computers are creating all this Bitcoin, and all these Bitcoins are all over the place, so and all the transactions you do and I do is visible to everybody in the world. But how is that? Uh, what, what, is, what, is, what is the anonymity of that? Because people say Bitcoin is, is a very high level of anonymity, uh, you know, and, uh, and, but I'm going to tell you this. Officially, Bitcoin is pseudonymous. Big word, pseudonymous. What it basically means is that all the transaction of Bitcoin is open. All, everything is open. It's a big ledger. But it just means that your name is not written in anywhere in the Bitcoin ledger. What is written is the transaction is done under a fake name, and that is a pseudonym. That, you know, the, 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 the transaction is done under a fake name. And when we say a fake name, in the computer terms, we are talking about an ID. Or you know, on a, a, a series of long numbers or a cryptographic key. But nobody, I don't know who owns that key. I don't know that cryptographic ID who owns it. But in the bit, in the in the blockchain, you can actually read it that this uh, this number, which is for example a wallet ID. This we're going to talk about wallet soon. This is the number that did this transaction of $100 million. It's, it's there. Now, people say Bitcoin is anonymous because you don't see the name of the person that owns that ID. But when trouble comes, I'm sure the government can find the person. True story. I'm sure... The government can find the person. So Bitcoin is not that anonymous that like people think. There are cryptocurrencies that are really black, anonymous currency, like uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, yeah, what you call it, uh, um, Numero, and and one of that cryptocurrency. But Bitcoin is not like that. So Bitcoin, um, you can be exposed using Bitcoin. So for people who think they're going to be using Bitcoin to avoid paying taxes well it can happen but i'm sure a time is coming that people can get into trouble with that and another reason is that bitcoin is a closed environment you see you when you have a bitcoin you can buy and sell a lot of things using bitcoin so you have 100 bitcoins you can buy a car you have 100 1000 bitcoin you can do this you can do every, a lot of things using bitcoin but Anytime you want to get out of that ecosystem, like get a fiat currency, then you have a problem, okay? Then you have a problem because then suddenly you cannot get out of that, that environment because then you have to go and buy a dollar or you go and buy pounds. You go and buy euros with your Bitcoin to get out of that environment and get that money now to go and build a house, to go and buy something else. To do that, the government wants to know your name, your address, the, the normal thing that they want to know from you. And where the hell did you get that 1,000 Bitcoin? How did you get that 1,000 Bitcoin? So, you know, it, it's a pain. So the, somewhere, if, for, if, you're, if people who are thinking of using Bitcoin to launder money, um, well, I am a cryptographic expert. I know how to use Bitcoin to stop people or track people who are using Bitcoin to try to do illegal activity. If the government wants to do that, they can do that. So that is not the reason why we should be praising Bitcoin. That is totally another story, okay? So now we have the Bitcoin wallet. So this is where people often get confused because yeah, the Bitcoin is there now. How do I use the Bitcoin? Well, Bitcoin has a wallet. So it is not a physical wallet like mine. I have my wallet here, but it's an electronic wallet. 
this electronic wallet is, is just a long series of numbers that are in a software. And this software, this digital wallet is a software, a hardware program that actually has a token these days. It can be a token like a credit card, but it can also be a token like the one the bank give you with numbers on it. Those tokens, what happens is that they keep track of that has a secure private key. It's what we call a private key. You don't need to understand how private key works. That is, there's a whole book that talks about that. If you are very bored and you have nothing to do one day for a whole month, you can ask me, I'll give you, a, you know, a, a list of uh, books that talks about key, private and public key. You can be busy with that for at least two years. But for this conversation, you don't need to understand too much about private key. But what you need to understand is that a private key is used to secure your uh, your digital information in that software. And that software can be on your mobile phone, can be installed on your laptop. It can also just be in the cloud in the system out there. And that software, that key, that private key, you are the only one to have it. So when you see all that crazy number they give you, when you open a digital wallet, that number is your private key. If you lose it, You've lost your, your, your wallet, okay? If somebody else take that private key, they can get access to your wallet and empty your digital currencies. So you need to keep that private key very secure. That's why they call it private key because your public key, everybody has it, but your private key belongs to you alone. If I want to send you money, I'm going to use, <laughs> I can, you know, I'm going to send it to using your, you know, your, your, your public key, but you, if you want to, you know, verify, you, you, you are the only one that can collect money that is sent to you with your key. So if you, but the software arrange all that, they, those two pairs of keys are always created. We're not going to go into that further. So every Bitcoin address is saved to a Bitcoin wallet. It contains the details of the person who owns the balance. Bitcoin wallets can send and receive Bitcoin. So that's just it. It's a software. And you have to be careful. You have to save it. You must not give it to somebody to mess around with it. So once these are the facts you need to know about Bitcoin. There are only 21 million Bitcoins that can be created. So if somebody, all the Bitcoins that are flying around there, Maximum that these machines can create is miners is 21 million bitcoins. According to a report, in about I think in 20 years, all the bitcoins will be created. You know, um, you have to go and Google it and find out. A new block is created on every every 10 minutes. Okay, so all these computers are working; they are creating it. There is actually a time limit. You know, you, you cannot just create bitcoin every minute. So there is a time that you are calculating, calculating, calculating that Bitcoin comma. We have a certain amount of Bitcoin that can be created a week. So therefore, the amount that can be created in a year is limited. Therefore, the amount of Bitcoin that can be created in 10 years is also limited. So this is a very limited technology in the, the talk, in when we talk about creating of coins. And that is why, because of the laws of demand and supply. The supply of Bitcoin is very small, very small, 21 million. Remember that big uh, thing I showed you about the money in the world? Imagine when we have the, you know, 1.5 trillion US dollars as against 21 million Bitcoins. It, 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 it's just dwarf the Bitcoin. Bill Gates is having a, a, a 80 something billion. So therefore, the value of each Bitcoin has to go up. It is the Bitcoin by nature must go up. If it is accepted as a digital currency, like it is being accepted today, then the value will always go up because of the limited supply. I repeat, because of the limited supply of Bitcoin is only 21 million. You cannot make more Bitcoin. Therefore, the price of Bitcoin will always go up, okay? Now, um, this, you know, you have, 
I don't know if you guys have had it, heard of a Satoshi. That is the name of the guy who they think, or the group who created Bitcoin. Satoshi is the smallest amount within Bitcoin, which is representing 0.000000. So Bitcoin, if despite the fact that you can, want, the, the, we have 21,000 limit, you don't have to own one Bitcoin. You can own 100 of a Bitcoin. Okay, you can own 1,000 of a Bitcoin that is, you know, and 1,000 of a Bitcoin is actually 1,000 Satoshis. So it's like Cobo, 100 Cobo make one Naira, okay? <laughs> 100 cent make one US dollar. So you have this, you know, okay. so you have these Satoshis. So if I give you two Satoshis, you know, maybe it's worth uh, uh, $10, $10 one day. So that is the value. That's why, despite the, the fact that there are only 21 million Bitcoin, the value can go much higher. So if you have one Bitcoin, you could have, it could be 100,000 one day, I don't know. But people will actually pay the Satoshis because they cannot afford a Bitcoin, okay? So having said that, now let's come to down to the real deal. So I hope you guys understand what Bitcoin technology is now. The real deal is this. We have a lot of snake oil salesmen. Snake oil salesmen, I don't know if any of you have seen snake oil, but there are people who can actually, they are, sneak, they are sneaky, they want to sell you everything. You have people, because ordinary people don't understand the blockchain technology. They will come out with very complex stories, ideas, and everything. They'll tell you, blah, 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 you know, and you go and invest money in it. And, well, it's a snake oil salesman. The chance that you will lose all your money is very big. So you have to be aware of these people. They are all over Facebook. They are all over the internet. Today, there are four major areas you can make money using blockchain technology, using other related cryptocurrency. And I'm going to tell you today, there is no magic to it. This is it. This is how it works. Okay. One is mining. Buy and hold, trading crypto cryptocurrencies and investing in blockchain technology. And I'm going to give it to you straight away. Okay. Now, this is mining. Basically, they are computers that are built and designed to mine Bitcoins and other cryptocurrency. When Bitcoin first of all came out, it was a big deal to mine because the, you can just put on the computer there and the computer will start mining and mining and mining and mining and mining, okay? Now, you actually get paid for Bitcoin. Anytime you mine Bitcoin, you get paid. But that was the days when Bitcoin was uh, three cent, five cent, ten cent, one dollar, five dollars. They were hobby uh, cryptographers, computer engineers were doing this stuff. They would buy a computer like this, just put it on, and they would start mining. This type of computer costs a lot of power. It is very expensive to run. It makes a hell of a noise the whole day. And Look at it. They have like six processors on top, uh, eight processors on top of this one. It's madness. So you can imagine how much power is consuming. But the people who run this machine, they get paid with, um, you know, Bitcoin. When you, are, you come into the Bitcoin business, the first thing people will introduce to you is mining of Bitcoin, period. They say, ah, Come and mine Bitcoin, oh yeah, you mine Bitcoin. People will try to sell you everything to come and mine Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin mining, a few months ago, maybe a year or two ago, was very lucrative business. But like every other business, because there are so many people involved in it today, the number of Bitcoin that is there is fixed. Even the number you can mine a week, all this comp you can have all the computational power in the world. The number of Bitcoin they can mine a week is very limited. So therefore, it is not that lucrative anymore. Now, look at this picture. These are some heavy dudes. This is a Bitcoin mining farm. 
okay? These computer system, they are so huge. These guys are the ones mining, making a lot of money through mining, okay? These guys are the ones making a lot of money through mining. So, um, let me go back. So now, try to imagine you with this machine, trying to mine some Bitcoin and get rich from it and paying like a $1,000 electric bill a year and any maybe $20 or $30 from it every month. Compare it with these guys who have this heavy duty establishment making a lot of money from their mining operation. It's a massive difference, okay? It's a massive difference. So personally, you might be lucky and you can sign up to a mining company that will be paying you some, maybe, um, you know, $50 a month, $60 a month to mine from it. And if you are, and, but you have to buy a mining machine for like around $2,000, uh, you know, so if you think that that little money they are paying you is worth the effort, yeah, why not? But it is not a, a big money making make, making business like some people want you to believe on online. Those days are over with mining, but there are still a lot of newbies who are buying mining machines daily because they want to know have make money. That is what they have been told. It reminds me of the saying that. In a gold rush, the people that sell the, the tools and the clothes to mine, they are the ones that make the money. And that is how it has become now with the uh, Bitcoin mining uh, business, okay? So the other thing that people do with Bitcoin is buy and hold. Not only Bitcoin with cryptocurrencies, okay? So today, what is buy and hold? It means that you go to buy a Bitcoin or Ethereum or you buy a Ripple or Zcash, one of those coins and you understand what it do. So you go and buy the coin and, and you and just keep it. You don't do anything with it, you just keep it. So with the hope that in a year, two years, the, the coin you bought for $2 become $1,000. That There are still coins that are sold for $2. In fact, Ripple, Ripple People sold for 60 cents, 70 cents, it just went to 70 cents this morning. So if you buy uh, 100 ripples, it costs you $70. And that's $70, that 100 could be what $1,000 uh, tomorrow, one day, and it becomes um, $100,000. I don't know. But that is what we call you buy and you hold. <laughs> you wait until the money comes one day. Now, the buy and hold is becoming more difficult now with Bitcoin because one Bitcoin is $17,000. So it is difficult to buy and hold one Bitcoin. Where do you get $17,000? So today, there are exchanges where you can buy, you know, you know uh, one-tenth of a Bitcoin, one-hundredth of a Bitcoin, you know, and just hold that small one. At least maybe it's worth something. But a Bitcoin... It is a very volatile product. Like, you know, this weekend, for example, Bitcoin went today, it dropped to 13,000 on Saturday. And by Monday, it was back to 17,000. So that is about $4,000 drop in one, in, in, in one weekend. And now it's back, it dropped and it went back to 17,000. It almost pushed 18,000 today. So now what does that mean? You see, volatility is a very bad thing in the market for some people who buy and hold. For people like me who trade the market, and I'm going to tell you how trading works, it's a very good thing when you have volatility. But if you buy something and hold, volatility is bad. Let me tell you why it's bad. Let's say you want to buy Bitcoin, and you bought a Bitcoin on last Thursday. You would have paid 17000 for it last Thursday. By the time it was Saturday, Bitcoin has dropped to 13700 So now you have lost over $3,000 in, in three days. You are sweating from all part of your body. That is basically how it works. Anybody that tells you that it is a, 
he won't, he doesn't have that problem. Like they always say that lie talk, you know, because that is how it works. You start to sweat from everywhere. And because of that sweat, that scare, you just lost $3,000. What do you do? You rush and sell. So you sell because before you lose further, let me sell it, let me sell it. And then you wake up the next morning, Bitcoin back to 17,000. Then your headache continues. That is what we call volatility. And volatility for people who are not used to that type of business is a very big, a bad thing. It can cause a lot of headache. People get heart attack from it. So because what people are doing, so that is why it's a very, it's not a good strategy for people who are just starting because uh, to have money that you don't care about, just put it there, forget it. Don't go and check the Bitcoin account, just leave it there. Then it is a good strategy. People often hear the story, talk about Bitcoin. They, they always know somebody who had 5,000 Bitcoin five years ago uh, and who lost the computer or who uh, did this, who did that. Everybody always knows those stories. But really, how many people did you know that have 5,000 Bitcoin and they, they go to the drawer and bring the computer out and say, ah, <laughs> this computer, they inside? It didn't happen. Because nobody knew that Bitcoin was going to be a big deal. Nobody knew about it. So anybody that told you that he had a computer full of 100,000 Bitcoin, a lie. It, it didn't happen. So all this story about, oh, I wish I know. I wish I have done this. I wish I have done that. Actually, no, nobody did it. People who have made money from Bitcoin now, they jumped in. They had a smart they jumped a few months ago when Bitcoin went for the 2,000 to 3,000, and then they are hyping it up. Yeah, it is hype. You hype it up so that other people join you. They, they, we, 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 we call it in the, in, the, in the stock business, the greater fool's uh, you know, a strategy. So you have this fool, he buys something at 17,000, and he's expecting that somebody come and buy it for 18,000, so then he make 1,000 profit. So there's a greater fool who buy it, and that one is hoping for another greater fool, another greater fool, and therefore, everything keeps going up, going up, going up, going up, going up, until one day, <laughs> something happened, reality set in, somebody say, hey, guys, what are you doing? This is not good. And then the price will just drop, boom. And then people will start crying. But most of the time, after it drop, it will keep going up again. It will keep going there again. But this time, more slowly, more slowly, less volatility. So if your heart is very good and you don't have a pacemaker, then, um, you know, you can buy Bitcoin. You can, you, can you can buy it and keep it. You know, you just realize that if you will lose 5000 one day, you buy getting back next week, but you will lose 3000 again. You might get it back again. That's what we call volatility. And that is a part of the game. Okay? So, now, to be able to trade Bitcoin and any other currency, you will need to register with cryptocurrency exchange. It's not a big deal. Just type in cryptocurrency exchange. I will show you some of them here. And you go and register. You just punch in your name, uh, you know, your email address and name. That's it. And then, you can, you can import some Bitcoin or some cryptocurrency and you can give them a credit card or transfer money to the account or whatever and you can, they, you can start buying coins. So that's what other people do. You can start buying coins from this cryptocurrency and keeping it. You buy and keep. And when, it, when the price goes up, you think, ah, now I can make profit. You sell it back to somebody else. So you buy, keep, sell. That is, you know, uh, how you buy and hold, and when you think that the price is going up, you sell it to the, the person. If the price is dropping, you are taking the heat, and you think, ah, I cannot take this anymore, you still can sell it to somebody else. Okay, these are some of the exchange out there right now. You have Kraken, you have CEF, Coinbase. Coinbase is very popular, um, Polonies, uh, Bitres, and Bistamp. These are some of the exchange that are there right now where you can, you can Google them, you can go there, you can create an account and you can start buying and trading uh, Bitcoin, uh, you know, what I call this one, uh, you know, 
um, Ripple and Ethereum and all these other coins. And another advantage of an exchange is you can trade, you can use Bitcoin, especially Bitcoin, to buy other currencies as well. So if you have one Bitcoin, which is 17,000 worth, you can actually use 1,000 to go and buy Ripple. You can use 2,000 to buy Ethereum. So Bitcoin in the world of exchange is actually a, a payment, accepted payment method to buy and trade other currencies. So that's what you need to know. If you don't have any base currency at all, then you need to use a fiat currency, which is a dollar, a pound, or whatever. Okay, so that's how it is. So now, uh, investing in the blockchain technology is another thing. So in my opinion, the future of investment in the cryptocurrency world is in blockchain technology. Like always what happened is that something would come out, like when the internet came out, then we have the dot-com bubble, everybody went into it, and then when the thing backfired, the thing hit some people where well, well. If dot-com crashed, then there were other companies who continue, like Amazon came, like Google was there, like, you know, all these, uh, all these companies came and they continued the dot com, they call it dot web 2.0, you know, and they became very successful that Amazon is now, you know, the second most successful company in the world. And there are a lot of these companies like that who have become very successful. But it is in dot com that went bust that in 2002, that is where all these companies came from. Why did it dot com get bust? It is always like that, especially when it concerns computer and business. This is the same thing with the blockchain technology. The internet didn't get bust, but a lot of the hype, the fakeness, the people who were creating trouble, who were setting up a small company and said it was worth billions, those were the ones that went broke, went busted. And a lot of people who invested money in those companies, they lost all the money. The same thing is going to happen with cryptocurrency. We have 1,300 cryptocurrency right now. And the number will grow to 5,000 one day. All this cryptocurrency, even the currency, the, the fake currency from with the, with, the, with the middle finger, that one even have over $50,000 investment. They were just to prove that, look, how stupid people are that people will put their money in anything that smell cryptocurrency. So they created that fake currency and then even people invested in that one. So you need to be aware that, uh, that this is something that because they wrote currency on it is going to be the next Bitcoin. Besides, a currency is not necessarily the way to go. It is even possible tomorrow that Bitcoin will no longer exist. It sounds crazy, but it is possible as a currency. But the blockchain technology, it has come to stay. It is like the internet. You can call it internet 2.0. It has come to stay. Most of the businesses that we are doing today on the internet, in the future, my, I'm very sure of it, is going to be going through the blockchain technology. And I'll give you an example. For example, if you look at the repo, repo is a new type of uh, you know, uh, blockchain-based uh, uh, coin. It is the fourth largest cryptocurrency in the world. It's very big. Today, you can buy a repo is very cheap because repo is about 70 cents. Bitcoin is 1,000. I keep saying 1,000. No, 17,000. 17,000, whereas Ripple is just 60, 70 cents. If you buy Ripple now, you might thank me in two, three years that you become a millionaire. You know, I've bought some Ripple, I'm going to buy more, I'll keep buying Ripple because I believe in Ripple. Now, Ripple is a technology that is based on the blockchain technology. It's a technology on itself. It's a payment network called RippleNet. So, when you say payment network, it means that 
for example, if you are transferring money from the US to Europe, it takes two or three days through some banks, okay? Um, it can be faster sometime, but if you walk to the bank to do it, it will, you know, some banks are fast, some are not, but it takes two or three days. Um, so now, if you, Ripple is a technology that speed that up to seconds. So if you want to send process from to, to, to a country like uh, India, or one of the remote countries that money doesn't get to on time, you can use Western Union. Western Union is going to charge you. Is Western Union will do it also immediately, but it's going. To, they are going to charge you, say you know, a lot of money to do the transaction. But by using Ripple, Ripple can replace Western Union just like that. And Ripple will charge you maybe, maybe you at the end you pay maybe one cent, two cents to make the transaction. So if you look at companies like um, Western Union and banks who are making these financial transactions. And you have to go to them. You have to go to Western Union. You have to go to the bank to make transaction, this financial transaction. Imagine if you just take a repo uh, wallet and type some number in it, and the number money is sent to a, a friend or a company in India in seconds. So because of that, repo has two functions. Repo is a currency. Pay with repo, and after you pay with it, the person can change it to other currencies, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, like Ethereum, and they can also transfer it to dollars or euros or pounds. So it functions as a currency. The second part is it is a technology of its own, and that technology we call is a payment network. It's like Visa. It's like MasterCard because those are payment network. You go to, you have a Visa card, give to somebody in the shop and, they, and you pay. That network is run by Visa. That is how Repo is. So I'm not saying that Repo would replace Visa or MasterCard. No, but what I'm saying is this, that MasterCard, uh, you know, Visa, they could using Ripple or a technology like Ripple that is built on blockchain, okay? That's the trick of investing in the cryptocurrency madness. Because the time will come, many of these currencies will crash and bomb. People will start crying. They will should have lost their houses. They have lost different things. They will start crying. But people who invest their money in the underlying technology like uh, Ripple, because it's a payment network, these people will be smiling to the bank. So when you want to invest in um, cryptocurrency, you have to look at the blockchain technology. That's where the money is. That's where I'm investing, the blockchain technology, because that is the internet of the future. That is the world of the future. That is where the voting systems are going to be built upon. That's where the world payment system is going to be built upon. That is where the type of technology that banks are going to be using to transfer money. Uh, Western Union is going to be using to transfer money. Uh, yeah, we're going to be using it to buy, you know, do all types of transactions that we normally do now that we need somebody. Writing contracts. You just write a contract based on the blockchain technology. Don't need a lawyer to come and sign it. I sign it with my key, and you sign it with your key, and we are done. We both agree on the on, on the content. We don't need the lawyer to, 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 to go and notarize it. So imagine all these people who are working as notary officers, that the time will come, we don't need those people services anymore because they are not cheap. Therefore, you can just take a technology based on blockchain, and you create a document, that is notarized and, and through the blockchain technology and is done. Okay, so if there is if if you didn't learn anything today, and this is the only thing you learn, understand that the future is blockchain technology. That any currency that is walking around there today 
that is going to be one of the 1,300 currencies. They could get to 5,000 currencies one day. If you want to research on the currency, type the name on Google, go to their website, and read what that currency is doing. Is it just a currency? Or it has a service or is a technology of its own that others can build something upon and run it on the blockchain technology. It is the companies, those companies that you should be investing on. Those, that is where the money is. That is where the next uh, buffet, the Warren Buffet is going to come from, Bill Gates, are going to come from. That's the place to be, man, and not a uh, Russian apart that one currency or the other just for fun. Okay, so the last one is basically uh, trading cryptocurrencies. Trading cryptocurrency, I do that because uh, cryptocurrency, like I say, it's jump up and down, jump up and down. It makes tantrum the whole day. That is what we call volatility in the trading business. When products make tantrum the whole day, it's very good for traders. That means <laughs> if it is this high, you, you, they will shut it, knowing that it will drop very soon. Maybe two hours later, maybe three hours, but don't worry, it will drop. If it drops very far, they know, okay, let me buy it, because they know it will go up very soon. So that uh, tantrum is making the market. People keep buying it and selling it, buying it and selling it. That's basically what trading is. So trading, uh, cryptocurrency is 24-7 like fiat currency. So you can trade the cryptocurrency from Monday to Sunday and continue on Monday. Uh, you can sh trade short term, you can trade long term, you can also buy the cryptocurrency and hold it. Uh, there you can buy one tenth of a Bitcoin and hold it. Uh, so trading for people who have the time to trade and who want to study it uh, is one way a lot of people today are making money using, um, you know, uh, cryptocurrency. And, and another thing is that in trading, one thing you need to understand is this, that there are also a lot of uh, things regarding trading. Uh, it's not just because we have this, what we call uh, option trading. Uh, option trading is actually a very tricky way of trading. Um, I don't recommend it. You have people online that tell you, oh, just give us $100, $200, and we have this machine that trades for you, and you will make a lot of money. Yes, and I think, you know what? If I make, make a machine that trades and makes money, I won't sell it to you. I won't, I won't let you pay $100 for it to be able to trade. I will trade all the money myself. I'll go to bank. I will lend more money. I will start trading it myself, become a billionaire. People who create a software and, and put it in the market, they are just there to make money from you as well. Uh, you also have people who, so there are so many uh, tricks in the market to make sure that you don't win. So people who want to go and trade currency, they are so trading cryptocurrency right now is, uh, is the fastest way to get broke because <laughs> There are, there are a lot of tricks in that market. It's a very, it's a wide, wide west. There is no regulation, no government control. Nobody tells you what to do, except everything you do there, you are doing it with your heart and money. So if you want to waste your money, it's a very good place to start. So, um, but, you know, that is not what we do. I have a group of students that I teach on how to do, run the work in the stock market. And we use calculated risk. We, uh, we, we trade, we are trading. We're starting a whole new cryptocurrency program. But before one of my students go and buy a cryptocurrency, they, may, they have learned a great deal about cryptocurrency and how to buy it, how to trade it, where to trade it, how to trade it. And so it's not just something you jump into. Like every other thing in life, 
um, you just don't jump into it and come out successful. I have a lot of study. Like the last day, even I am talking to you now for about one hour, half hour. Everything I'm telling you now is even burning my brain. Talk less of you who is sitting down there to just hear it. And some of you are hearing it for the first time. It's, it's, it's difficult. Uh, everything you're going to be doing in life to make money is hard. So it requires a lot of learning, study, take your time to go through it. But one thing for sure is there is a lot of money in cryptocurrency. There is a lot of money to be made through cryptocurrency. And there are millions of dollars to be made through cryptocurrency by people. In fact, me, yours truly, I'm going to be making millions of dollars from cryptocurrency. And there's no doubt about that. So the opportunity is there. But the question is, are you willing to spend time in learning it? Are you willing to really spend time to understand? It? If I tell you not to go and study 50 cryptocurrencies and make an educated choice, which one you think is going to be performing in the next two years, do you have the time to do that? Do you want to do that? Do you, do you think that is worth doing? Okay, but that is the type of work that is involved. It is otherwise, other than that, you're just going with the hype. Somebody say, eh, now Bitcoin now, come on, yeah, come, 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 come back Bitcoin, come back Bitcoin. And at that time we crash. You say, ah, now Ripple now, come back Ripple. And that's, no, 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 no. That's not how to do it. All these advertisements you, have, you see on Facebook, everything you see on Facebook, those are not the real people talking to you. Those are the people that want you to lose your money. Because, because that is the game. The game is once something new come out, there are a bunch of people around who want you to lose your money because then they can gain money. It is not, it is not only Nigeria people do. For, these are more sophisticated for one night because you, <laughs> they're just promising you to buy a product and you buy it and then you get the product. For one night, don't give you anything at all. That's the problem. But these guys actually sell you a product. You will get the software. You will pay for the trading, but it never gets anywhere. I never, I have never seen somebody who got rich from using automatic software. So I know people say to me, hey, there's one man, they there, he did one. That's one. Now, yeah, I'm talking because of my experience. I've been in this business for, um, for a very long time. Um, I, I understand crypto technology. I, I, I've, been, I've been doing crypto technology for the past 15 years. And believe me, when we started crypto technology, nobody ever thought that a digital currency is going to be created using cryptography. And even when it was possible, we didn't think that it would be acceptable because of the nature of, you know, because it's a, uh, okay, cryptocurrency is not a big deal. But this set of guys that came up, they came up with this amazing technology called the blockchain technology, and they make use of cryptography to make it work. And that, that, is, that is brilliant. That is just brilliant. And that's why we are even talking like this. Okay. So these are some of, this is a, a picture of some of our friends who are mining. So for <laughs> Nigerians who want to go and mine, eh? you see this guy here, he is like, he has like maybe a few thousands mining machines. So <laughs> people who want to go and start mining Bitcoin, just remember that before you even start, eh, there, are, there are people out there who have like 10,000 mining machines. And so then you need to ask yourself, if I go into that business where you have people like this, is, is, is there really money left for me? So before somebody is paying 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 dollars to buy a mining machine from him or have a mining contract, um, you know, is that really the way to go? So there are a lot of strategies you can use. Uh, honestly, there are a lot of strategies you can use to get this done. And if you want to do that, you can get in contact with us. We can, you, you, basically, I'm an educator. I don't promise people heaven and earth. I'm an educator. I train people on how to do a lot of things in life. So one of the things I do is teach people how to invest money in the stock market. Um, trade with their money uh, and we uh, 
you know, we are doing cryptography, uh, sorry, a cryptocurrency. Next year, we're going to be doing the whole year cryptocurrencies. Anywhere there is a cryptocurrency, I hear them. I'm going to be there. So it's going to be, because that's the future, if you want to make money, to be in the future. You got to be in the cryptocurrency industry. You got to understand how it's going to work. So I've given you another thing you can do. Uh, this morning I had a program and said, look, you got to get to work. People got to get to work. Um, that's just how it goes. You got to get to work. So anybody that think that, oh, let me just slip this through. Uh, or let me just, uh, I, I hear that somebody's trying to sell one Bitcoin. I'll buy it from here. Don't worry. I'll, you know, all, this, all those things don't work. So you, will, you will wake up two, three years from now. You will see uh, white children who are 15, 16 years old. They will be worth like $10 million. And then you will still be there, you know, and then you will remember this presentation that I gave. And you will still worth maybe $50,000. Then you start asking yourself, why didn't I take action? But the reason why you didn't take action would be, oh, you didn't want to do the work. That's just it. You didn't want to do the work because people want to spend a holiday for Christmas uh, and enjoy. People want to stay, spend the time for New Year and enjoy. They didn't do the work. They didn't do the work. And by God's grace, I will still be alive. Maybe I won't be doing this anymore because I, I must have, after some time, I'm going to stop all this. Because I've, I've done my best after some time. Well, I have done a thousand videos. I've done my best. And I say, okay, look, man, anybody that still don't get it after a thousand videos is never going to get it. So if you want to know what I think, my videos are online, go and take care of it. I'll chill. Like I always say, you know what? Miami Beach is still fresh. I'll chill for some time. You know, I've worked so hard in my life and I want to help people, but people need to get up and work. So I, I want you to have this slogan, get up and work, get up and work. So that's it today. I hope you all had a blast. Okay. I hope you all had a blast. You know, and this is the best I can do today. This is my first, second presentation today for free. I hope you all got a blast. And... Um, I won't have the time to take questions today um, because uh, it has been a long day. So I'd like to thank those who still hang around. Thank you very much. And I wish you a nice, uh, um, you know, weekend because I, might, I won't be making a video tomorrow. And uh, I'll be back in a weekend with something else. So I hope you guys can uh, continue learning and become a millionaire as well. I've given you the key to the future. It's up to you to open the door and go inside. Okay, thank you very much. Those who have been with me live on the on, on Zoom, um, I appreciate it. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot take question right now. I will see you some other time. Anybody that wants to learn further, you are free to join my program, my Insights, Insiders program, my uh, where, we, where we are doing trading. Um, it's going to be massive next year. But we are studying it. We have been doing it. Um, by next year, the fee is going to be going up because I only want people there who are very, very serious. Thank you very much. And have a nice evening. Bye.